um, what was I saying? Yeah, so I just, we WhatsApped and it was just like small talk, how you doing? Um, and then at one point I, w- I went to Nigeria to go and see my grandma. I thought, uh-huh. let me pay my dad a surprise visit. So I didn't tell him that I was coming. And he was so appreciative of that. And I'm not saying do something as extreme as going on a surprise visit to a different country, but where possible, obviously engage in, um, you know, telephone communication. Thank you for saying welcome back. <laughs> that was my <laughs> mommy. <laughs> oh, hey mama. Um, engage in telephone communication where possible physical meetups um another thing is i i love giving gifts are my love language and one thing, girl i love i love and one thing that i did that really my mom wasn't too happy about it but i asked my dad like is there anything that you need and he was like oh yeah i just need a few shirts so uh, me i didn't spend too much money because i said i don't know i'm not i'm still testing him shot went to matalan quickly got a couple shirts Gave him the shirts, got him some slippers. He was very appreciative. And I think it's small things like that, that kindness, that honor, and mm. the blessing that you get from your... One day, when, they, when your parents speak a blessing over you, it, it matches no other blessing. Come and on. Let me be honest with you. It matches no other blessing. And for my dad to say thank you to me and to be appreciative, yes, it was expected, but at the same time, it was like, wow, okay. This guy has emotions. It touches he, it, something. It touched, yeah. You know, and even when I did the surprise visit to Nigeria, he was very appreciative. You know, he likes to show me off and all of that. Um, and my mom wasn't too happy at the time, but I think she, now she can see the place that I was doing it from was from a place of honor. Yeah, not, as, the, as the head, not the head. Yes. Head of your siblings, so to speak, yes. as the first child. You kind yes. of pave a way to say, right. you know... Um, but also, I, what I also love about what you've done is you did not start with accusation. Because sometimes mm. people think reconciliation should start with addressing the issue. Yeah. And yeah. I don't want to out my mom. I was at a, um, a women's event or something or marriage event that my um, dad was, not, not my dad, my mom was preaching at. And she basically said some women, when there's an issue, to deal with like you can't get over the issue so all you're focusing is on the issue and you make everything tense and when it's tense nobody wants to talk then but you learn to play with your man you know make him feel relaxed then you open this fellowship and in fellowship there can be effective communication but most of the time there's an issue in any relationship we shut down fellowship and then Mm -hmm. we think we can communicate effectively Mm -hmm. but communication is easier when there's so like building and sometimes well most of the time your your reconciliation or forgiveness is not based on that sorry sometimes we want to we want that person to own up and beg us and say sorry and do something to make whatever but sometimes the best way to move on is to restore fellowship yes restore fellowship restore like hi dad how yes. are you um one thing that god said to me personally was sow the seed you want to see you can't yeah. assume that this person has it together so you mm. want that person to check on you did you check on them um, mm. um you mm. want that person to love you but are you loving them sow mm. the seed like mm. teach that person how to love you and the way you do that is to sow the seed so hey yeah. dad how you doing um yeah do something that that person likes because you're yeah. teaching, you you know, it got to a point for me it, uh, where if I haven't spoken to my dad um, for a couple of days, a week, even like a couple of days ago, my dad was like, well, no, you're, not even, you're not even checking up on, you're not you even don't remember me again. <laughs> and it's like fellowship helps relationship with God yeah. and with man. Yeah. If there is no yeah. fellowship, then there is really no health. You can't have a healthy relationship and communication is harder. So that's, yeah. that's a, someone just said something. About Be rejection. prepared for rejection or yeah. not the greatest response. Yeah, because some dads just don't know how to deal with it, which is what happened to me. I was real disappointed with his response after contacting. That I, is real. I can testify of that. You know, mm-hmm. even before the whole WhatsApp him, this was when my dad was still around. I remember going to his house in London and I, I just, I, I think I had a moment. I had a moment where I was like, I'm going to tell him exactly how I feel. I'm going to tell him what he did was wrong. And his response was kind of like, it is what it is. Like, this is the situation. Mm-hmm. And I think at the time I must have been 15. And the hate bubbled up. <laughs> it, bubbled, it was like, eh? 
So you can't even recognize what you've done is wrong. And I think even even at that young age, I had a maturity of, of course, that when you do something wrong, it's important to self-regulate, understand what you've done wrong, understand the other person. I have to look at my dad now as an adult. I look at that situation, I'm like, you know, his own maturity level wasn't quite there for that particular conversation, for the relationship with And it's even like, sometimes it may be like, ah, uh -uh, who are you to, I mean, you were 15. Yes. Who <laughs> are you to tell 15 year old calling up, you know, and you want to... Yeah that yeah okay yeah it's almost like what do you know how how why why was the experience that deep for you you know look at you now you're fine kind of thing and you want them to see the deep wounds oh you just i don't want you to glaze over that look mm -hmm. at you now you're fine when someone doesn't think that what they did harmed you because you look fine you're fine you look fine and you know what that is in psychology we call it self-silencing mm. because by virtue of that now you become this person who, regardless of the situation, you're smiley, smiley. And you're self-silencing your emotion because you feel like people can't handle it because guess yep. what, daddy can handle it. So, the, wow. have you heard of the orphan spirit? Mm. What would you, how would you describe the orphan spirit? What does that look like? <clears throat> it looks like someone who is... <laughs> How can I put it? I can only put, I can put the word defense mm. and I can put the word self-reliance, self-dependence, where there's, there's just, there's no, there's no sense of I'm accountable to this person. There's no sense of there's anyone leading me, guiding no belonging. me. There's no belonging. There's no sense of identity. You know, when you belong to someone, there's a sense of pride. When I see children with their moms and their, their dads, in the supermarket there's a sense of, that's my mom you know that's my dad but an orphan doesn't have that they don't have that sense of ident identity they, they may not have a well-developed self-concept as well their yeah. emotions may be less developed than others you know there's even research that suggests that children who grow up in a home that has healthy communication collaboration between parents healthy emotions they are better well-developed socially emotionally physically mm. So an orphan may not get all those qualities. Yeah. So the orphan, like someone said, it's like um, a sense of abandonment, loneliness, alienation, isolation. That like reject, just just feeling rejected, and like yeah. like no identity. So would you say that daddy issues feeds into that? Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I don't want to in in that respect. I don't want to restrict it just to daddy issues because I know there's so many people who have mummy issues as well, you know. And I think absolutely it, it does link to to daddy issues. That sense of abandonment, that sense of rejection, um, and then it can feed onto one's later life as well. Mm. Okay, so healing has to be not based on their sorry because I'm looking mm. at the time. Not based on their sorry. Mm -hmm. um, Honoring, not based on emotion. Mm -hmm. um, communication, like mm -hmm. restoring fellowship. Um, what other points would you say? If you're going to say a trigger for healing, like um, what would you... I, do, I don't know how to end this. We're going to pray. I think we should pray. We, but, we should uh, definitely pray. I think, I think another, just to add to what you shared in, in summary, we, we said that God is not man. God is not man. And you have to allow the the Abba Father, the fatherhood of God, to eradicate all human experiences of fatherhood that have failed you. You know, yeah. to, to allow his love to get rid of that feeling of abandonment, that feeling of I'm not worth it. You know, there's no one who cares for me or I'm an orphan. I feel like I'm alone. Oh, that feeling I of just, identity. I just, something just came pressed on my heart. I'm really sorry. Mm. But there's sometimes, and I've, I've had a few cases, where mm -hmm. the father has been abusive, not just to their mom, but to them. To the and not yeah. just not just physically, even sexually. Mm. And that's like... Oh. That's and is, nothing, is, nothing is greater than the blood of Jesus, but on our human expression, mm. it's like, whoa. Yeah. yeah. And since <laughs> this, is, this is even at a point where I say I, I can't even speak too much about how to respond to that because I, I haven't experienced I haven't been there. I think the, 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 the person we would say 
I, I don't know if Joyce Meyer was, I don't think she was sexually abused by her dad. I'm not really sure about mm. the full testimony, but I know that there was, there was abuse there. I think it was physical mm. abuse. Um, and then when she was in ministry, God telling her again with that forgiveness to go back to her parents, to mm. buy them a house to, and it was, it really, it hurt her. But sometimes God allows the hurt of healing yes. to make you whole. Yes. Wow. Like the, because sometimes wow. it, it, it hurts more to heal because you, you can get used to the pain of being hurt that the thought of healing could be like, uh-uh. You know, I got an example for you. Go ahead, girl. I had my wisdom teeth removed. It was causing me so much pain. And there was a fear of the removal. Mm. There was a fear of the healing that will come through removing that, that, that wisdom tooth that was being unwise. And it's similar to what you're sharing, that yeah. oftentimes we are in a painful situation, but we fear what the healing process will look like. And so we choose to remain in that painful situation. Look at in the Bible, when Jesus wanted to heal the, the lame man, and he's sitting by the, the water, his fear is on, there's nobody who's around to put me in the water. And Jesus has to prompt him, what do you want? Mm. What do you need? The, the end goal. Available. What do you want? The end and goal. You're giving excuses. You know, the healer, the healer is before you and you're giving excuses. There's no one there to put me in. Oftentimes, we've got broken situations and we're waiting for someone to push us in. But the healer's right there saying, come and be healed. And his way, is his way of healing us can... Sometimes his way of healing us is telling us to forgive someone that doesn't... So forgiveness is not based on them deserving it. And sometimes we, in our mind, we're like, that is unforgivable. Yeah. That, that I, how, I could never. And there's so many never. And what we say never to is not just their forgiveness, but it's our healing, it's our wholeness. And yes, yeah, some of us have been in that position where we've been physic, um, sexually abused by our parents or maybe mm. physically abused by our parents. But again, I just, God in his infinite mystery, there is a way. And he said that come to God. Before you go yeah. to man, come to God. Come like, to God. pour out. I love Hannah's story where she was like, the Bible says she poured all her bitterness before God. Like the first place for you to pour out everything is before God and ask God, like heal me, help me, but also be willing to go with God on the journey of that healing. Because sometimes we can say to God, I, I, I just expected you to just touch me. And God is like, no, your healing is tied to your obedience. Mm -hmm. So could you, could you obey yes. me? Because he won't force it on you, but yeah it's it's yeah. oh i really pray for our generation because God is i good. see so much potential like we can change the game but we are we 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 also need to know that we have responsibility oh yes. thank you so much wedex because that came to my heart actually about when the dad maybe has passed away and right uh, and that's one of my one of my biggest things. I'm like, yo, we can't be waiting for them to be sick on their deathbed no, before. We, no, we but in a have. situation where the person has transitioned and, and yeah. they want to um, reconcile, reconcile. Um, the the person I remember is Benny Hinn speaking about his dad, right. um, and God saying, you know, just imagine he sat there. Like it's not you can't bring him back to. We don't. We're not going to know Ouija board or. Mm. palm reading or no familiar no. spirit we and don't do that we don't do that no but he said he just remembered like just like speaking out everything yeah. he wanted to say and god being present to help him heal because yeah. he felt his dad was too harsh on him and too hard mm. on him and mm. that still helped and sometimes we we do, not sometimes everything we do is by faith yeah and so we can our earthly fathers may not be there but mm -hmm. by faith, we can speak to God and say, listen, yeah. that son you created that was my father hurt me. And he yeah. did this. and just ask the Lord to help you. Because again, just as um, if your father is here, that your forgiveness is not based on the sorry. It's the same. I would say just try and trust, but ask the Lord for Absolutely. help. help. Yeah, I think it's also good. Yeah. And it's beautiful to be able to forgive um, retrospectively. Mm -hmm. And to know that, like I said earlier, when it comes to forgiveness, sometimes we isolate it to this thing of, I've forgiven them and that's it. 
but you forgive them every time the memory comes the memory. and memories don't die you know memories don't die with the person who's gone so even every time that memory of oh my dad was too harsh or oh, my dad did this to me you are forgiving them again and that forgiveness is releasing you to be the graceful person that god created you to be yeah yeah thank you so much Amen. Thank you so much. Um, please know that we're not absorbing them of their responsibility, no. but we're saying that you have your part to play. You can elongate the pain or you can, yeah. you can put the cross there and come into healing. You can yeah. be a, a, an advocate of grace and Absolutely. mercy so that you can move into life. Um, awesome. Okay. Um, I think we've touched a lot there there's still more yeah. i'm actually trying to work on getting the older generation represented in this conversation so if you mm -hmm. want to volunteer your dad <laughs> when he will he get instagram the guy's <laughs> on WhatsApp. He's, he's, he's one Thanks. of those um, awesome thoughts. also <laughs> for people that are watching and you know you want to talk through some of these issues um i'm connected with a, a, a counselor um, emotional development mentoring are available. So if you want me to connect you with them, please send me an email or DM me and I will give you their details, but you can find them emotional development mentoring. Um, they do talk therapy and sometimes you just need to just like your mentor pretty much yeah. did talk therapy with you. He did. And, <laughs> yeah. And, and it's really, it, it really does help to mm. just kind of, cause it's about your legacy. It's about your future. It's your turn. And uh, I want you to put the best foot forward. I'm trying to put the best foot forward. By the grace of God, I'm going to put the best foot forward. Because I, I believe we can. The Bible says, um, I pray that you be, you prosper and be of good health, even as your soul prospers. I believe in the entire prosperity of people. That's what God wants for you. The anchor scripture for a Luther, the ministry I run, is, um, it's for freedom that Christ has come to set you free. So mm -hmm. I want you to walk in that freedom, stand, stand in that freedom, but you must be responsible to take on the freedom that God That's has right. given you. Now, Amen. Dr. Deaconess Canayo, <laughs> you please pray for us. And yeah. pray for everyone that's watched and will be watching. And just pray for our generation as the Spirit of God leads you. Amen. Let us pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you because you are Abba Father, our Heavenly Father, Lord. We thank you because you have dethroned any expectation that we have placed on you based on our human experiences, Lord. Father God, I thank you because your love is continuing to free us from any feelings of abandonment, any loss of identity due to um, daddy issues, God. Um, we also thank you for our fathers. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for the position that you have given them in our lives, oh God. And Lord, despite any failings, any shortcomings, oh God, we thank you for your grace upon them and also upon us to extend grace, oh Lord. Father God, we ask that you teach us how to honor those who perhaps we feel don't deserve our honor. Teach us how to love those despite the rejection that they present us with lord jesus father god we thank you oh god because you call us your sons and your daughters you have grafted us into your family lord god and for that we are so grateful allow us to take on your identity allow us to be your children in our lives in our activities in our speech in our actions lord in every part oh god may we remember that we are first your sons oh god father lord, we thank you for this ministry thank you for reverend one of oh lord for all that she's doing and even for people who are going to come on later on this week and in weeks to come oh lord we pray that you'll continue to give us the words to say that your people will be liberated and free in you in jesus name we have prayed amen amen, amen. let the peace of god god your heart and mind in the name of jesus that's my prayer for you that you will know the zoe of god the life of god in and through you i just feel the peace as you prayed i just felt the peace of god and i pray peace and for that person that you haven't been able to sleep very well i pray the peace of god you will feel that right. the, the presence of god um i love the passion translation he calls it the wraparound presence of god yeah the wraparound presence of god over you um Amen. It is possible for you to be whole. It is possible. And your wholeness is not tied to man. It's tied to God. And he's, the, he's so perfect in all of his ways. Yes. I love you. If you need to spend time before God tonight, please do that. And just ask God to just wash over you. 
you Amen. are able to do this because Christ can strengthen you. You're able to forgive. That lie of the enemy is shut down. You're able. You're able because Christ in you is helping you to do what you cannot do in your own. Yeah. I love you. Um, Kat says, I haven't been sleeping. Well, I pray you will know the peace of God. And the Bible says he gives rest to his beloved. I pray you will, you will experience the rest of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, my heart is glad. Thank you so Amen. much, Kanayo. Yes, Thank you, um, the life is saved. The first one's saved. I'm going to save this one. Doc, I got to have you back here on for something. <laughs> But we'll see how the spirit leads. Life, Your first <laughs> live, girl. My first live. Thank you. Uh, you did great. Did she do great? I'm going to clap for you from here. I love you. Thank I you. absolutely I, love you. Thank you so much for being a great light in our generation. I really, yeah. I, I can point to you. I talk to me about here. Yeah, yeah. Just check her out. She's doing great things. Honestly, yeah. grace, great grace upon you. Oh, I, I just want to hug you, girl. Oh, I'm all out there right now. See the pretty little girl. Ooh. Anyway, oh, love good. you guys. Have a good night. Bye. Oh, blessings from Canada. God bless you, man. God bless Bye. you. Thank you, Susanna. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>